Okay, as we said last time, uh, I don't tell Rob what movie we're gonna talk about. And uh, I was looking for a one to do this week, and I said, you know, I really want to talk about this one because I want to know just what the hell was up with this fad that consumed America in the early 90s. Rob, let's talk about Fern Gully. Let's talk about saving the rainforest and how, like, that what was do you, the most. Hate the environment? No! This was the most important thing in the world. It was. In the early 90s, if you no, were a little kid. No, they made it feel no. like all no. of it was on us. No, there were also whales. Oh, yeah, you whales. Save the whales. No, no, like no. no it's Star, Star Trek. Trek movie. Yeah, Star Trek 4 is what you're thinking of. Was that 90? No, it was 80s. It was no, like to hunt a species to extinction is illogical. Who well, said the human race is logical? Yeah, whatever. Give us the whales. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go on a religious show. That's extremely logical. <laughs> uh, seven of heaven, so I'm going. <clears throat> yeah, that... <sighs> okay, you, you're obviously older and, you I'm gonna know... Say, I'm going to gonna say that, that was I... definitely a 90s thing, because I don't... Uh, the Who 80s... even talks about the rainforest anymore? Like, and, and it's... I'm not saying I'm anti-rainforest or whatever. It's just like, but it was suddenly like... Hey, look, it's Toucan thing. Sam! Burn his home to the ground! <laughs> <laughs> it, but it was like the biggest thing, and everything was aimed towards the kids. I, it felt like, like, the kids will save it. The kids will help us, and they never told us how. It was just like, the rainforest is important. It's very, very important, and it's being destroyed. It's being destroyed. So it bears everything. Being destroyed. You know, and you're like, oh my god! And that's like, this is what happens I, when Democrats take over the White House. <laughs> <laughs> it's because Clinton got in office, god damn. Actually, I, maybe. Uh, no, because no, it was just so weird. Like, yeah, I'm not, like I said, it's not, uh, anti-important or anything, but it's like, why the whole world, like for about five or six years was like rainforest. And I'm like, okay, it's important, but there's, I feel like there's more important things that we could put in the center and we could be showing to kids. Maybe it was just like a, that. I don't remember it in the eighties as much. No. Um, I like the eighties. Well, that, you know why? Because the eighties, we had other things scaring us. We had the, the, Fucking Russians with their nukes pointed at us. Well, well, we had Wall um, Street, everything. And 80s we had this was very weird much... guy with a birthmark and the shape of Whistler's mother on his head, like, and, and, and we didn't know what he was about, and <laughs> Reagan was just like, up, chuff, tear down this wall, and we thought the world was gonna blow up, and then we had AIDS! AIDS <laughs> everywhere! Just AIDS, 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 and shit. AIDS! Yeah, everybody getting AIDS and shit. And, and, and then Wall Street, everything was about making money for yourself, and like, you know, the huge profit so, and stuff, so I mean, it was a I'm, very I, I think we were too busy kind of being time. scared and coked up in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. All sorts shit, of new drugs. To give a shit about the rainforest. Um, but I feel like once everybody checked into rehab for their drug addiction They problem, became hippies and they're like, the rainforest, man. That's what's important, the rainforest. I, there, was a, there was a cultural shift. Uh, there, there really was, because yeah, I don't... Global warming was the next big it thing in the 80s. I do remember that because I remember like it was like 1988. I remember seeing some sort of special in school and they were talking about it. it's like it's going to be in the year 2000. It's going to be a thousand degrees and the seas are going to be melting and and well, actually we're kind of halfway there. So, you yeah. know, they weren't entirely wrong, but it yeah, good gore comes out it's just like later cuz everyone uh, forgot about it. It's just like, "Oh, look, we were kind of right." <laughs> the, the the funny thing is like from what I remember from that special to what we have now, I'm like, actually it's not that far off. Yeah, I was like just like thinking about it. I'm like, "Yeah, it's always really hot around here in summer. It's but you actually, know, no, no, the, the climate, I, I very much believe in climate change. Uh, no, the summer... The, I, 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 we're, we're from we're, Chicago where well, the weather is still never in a, normal. We're still in a drought. Yeah, here, and, and it's so still it's hotter. Crazy. Well, ask the, the fucking pictures of California with, like, the reservoirs that are, like, down to zilch now. Like, I mean, so it... The only thing that they were not saying, because back then they referred to it as global warming, was that the winters would get shittier. I didn't know that. If they had told me that originally, <laughs> I would have been, oh, we're fixing right, the ozone. Right now, Chicago, like right now, is always a season off. Only now are we starting to not get rain, and like May is almost over. So it's like May flat, you know, May showers bring June flowers. Well, I and guess. Sh Chicago weather is always such where it's like if you don't like it, wait five minutes. Um, yeah, but I mean, our, now it's five but, seconds. But <laughs> our seasons are even. Our seasons are even crazier now. Yeah, I feel like weird. from from what I remember as a kid living in the '80s around here, and then the early '90s. We're getting really sidetracked. We'll get to Fern Gully ah, in a minute. Sorry. But from what we have now, well, you brought it up 
We're talking about the fucking environment. It's your goddamn fault. <laughs> I feel like it's definitely the weather's crazier now than it was when I was a it, kid. It, it was yes. way more predictable. It was like, okay, you'll get snow from about this month to this month, and you generally get around this amount, and you always have an off year where it's a little crazier, your El Nino year, but I yeah. feel like the past 10 years I've been living here, I'm like, it's been nuts. I will say this, like, it's been crazy. You but the tornadoes in, like, like late November now but around pretty here. Much, but, like, here, but here's the funny thing. When you expect the crazy times now, because, you know, we have really intense winters and stuff, but now it's like the winters won't get crazy until, like, maybe March or something like that, and then we'll actually have an okay winter, so everything's like a season off, or a couple well, months off. we also just had a El Nino, so, yeah. so, but that's, that's kind of nice, though. I'm almost like, you know, global warming's giving us some nice winters. <laughs> Which Here? Is, yeah, no, and then... Talk to California. the rest of the world. Talk yeah. to California or Australia. Isn't half of that all on fire now or something? No, yeah. honestly, whenever I'd come up, whenever I woke up on a winter morning and it was, like, actually really nice and pleasant, I'd be like, thank God for global warming. <laughs> um, but no, it's still obviously a big problem. Um, um, obviously, the scare campaigns did not work with us. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get... You, you, it's gonna be so many any tinfoil hat types talking about the global climate change conspiracy and how it's all I watch the comments are just gonna be chock full of it no like I again we'll get to Fern Gully uh I, I was skeptical too you know in terms of, like the research and how detailed it is I don't know I just walk out friggin side and it's like this is not the weather I normally have and we're from a place where the weather is but already Doug, crazy Fox News says <laughs> well there you go the uh, chart at Fox News says <laughs> uh so anyway so uh, right, global okay, so warming and glo climate change so is the new scare so but back then it was rainforest and it was just this strange global strange warming's obsession. not the new scare that's what I was saying it it Cropped up in the 80s was when they first started No, but then it went away, it. and then, then it went away it back because of the rainforest thing. Like, yeah. the rainforest... Thanks, Fern Gully. <laughs> I, I feel like, yeah, it, it's... Environmental concerns... We, there were two big ones in the 80s. Global warming was just cropping up, and then, thank you, Exxon Valdez, like, all of a sudden the oil companies, that became a big thing because... Oh, yeah, oil, that was the other one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You destroy an entire bay in Alaska with your drunken captain ramming your tanker, and, you know, like, all of a sudden that makes headlines, but... So those are the two big things, but, yeah, it, it like... The rainforest, I just don't remember hearing about it much until, like, the early 90s. And, and it was they, just, like, slap yeah. in the face, like, and then everywhere. The advent of... Well, and part of it is... Fucking Captain Planet. I think, like, Captain Planet somehow, like... Well, Captain Planet did a lot of that stuff, but certainly. But it was, like, every... Uh, Tiny Toons talked about it. Animaniacs talked about it. Uh, like, every cartoon show that was on at the time had something about it. There was tons of movies uh, aimed at kids, and it seemed like we're mostly going to aim at kids talking about this. So I just knew, okay, Rainforest important. I hate watching these boring, awful things, but I got Rainforest important. <sighs> what do you want me to do about it? And they never said what to do about it. Captain, hey, hey, what could we do Captain about it? Captain Planet did turn off your water when you're done using it and always make sure to turn off the light. And recycle. Th that'll save the rainforest. Uh, so yeah, it's weird because it wasn't just being environmentally <laughs> no, okay, I will be, aware. I, let's be fair, it didn't Captain Planet, I swear to God, like everyone's over there, like, right, you're a congressman. <laughs> <laughs> did, did they? Maybe they did. It's well, like kid. it's like super. It's, it's like Superman car. though. It's like some Congress like little Timmy from South Dakota wants me to save the rainforest. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Superman for gear up all our nuclear weapons. Um, <laughs> little Timmy is angered. Um, but yeah. So uh, and, and here's the other thing. There's two things I was thinking going uh, into his real thoughts. Is like yeah, what was the obsession with the rainforest? Why did it just take over? kids media even though again it's it's not a bad cause but why was that the number one thing we had to hammer into kids i think there were a number of things coming together at once one i'm not entirely lying there was a culture shift i think part of it was you know we got out of the reagan bush one years um i think there was a consciousness of just coming out of the 80s that we're all just like wow we're all a bunch of selfish pricks. Yeah, we have. Like, you know, let's do we something to make ourselves feel better. Um, I, the rainforest destruction was an actual issue. Like, it's not like that was just made up. Like, oh, oh no, no, I, I know. So that actually was legitimately happening. There were movies like The Mission and stuff that were talking about the indigenous tribes in the rainforest, and that was happening in the late 80s. That, like, oh, well, we're destroying the native tribes there. So that happened at the same time. You had this push... 
I want to say it started in the late 80s and early 90s to make kids entertainment educational. Like there had to be some certain <laughs> yeah, amount. Yeah, that's true. But why so, the rainforest? Why, why was that the biggie for kids? Because it's easy. But it seems like the thing that kids can't do anything exactly. about. Exactly what oh. parents wouldn't love to have a problem like, all right, let's just send a letter to our congressman. There, we did it. We helped save the Okay, now but... I'm getting it. Okay, so you start talking to these kids, maybe like, no, no, educational, when really this is the easiest bullshit. Save the rainforest. You're done. You don't have to put any extra effort into something. That kind of makes sense. We want to do something for a good cause, but we want to do it as lazily as possible. It's, it's the perfect California answer, too, because it's like, I like tropical paradises. I live in California. I'll help save the rainforest and throw money at something. And, the, you know, it's easier than being like, oh, yes, I'll get involved in this geopolitical situation. Like, what are you going to do? Be like, save the Middle East? You don't want to wade into that, like, yeah. minefield no, of, like, politics and religion, and, like, the rainforest is easy. Who doesn't love toucan sand? <laughs> but the downside is the rainforest is also a little boring. So they have to add things like fairies and little dry. Well, I guess there are, like, you know, kind of dragons in the rainforest. I mean, not, like... Dragons, but you know what I'm talking about. Some yeah, and we had to make these smog bastard. monsters and smoke monsters and stuff. Um, so and this brings me to my second thought about this movie. I'm really <laughs> curious. No, I'm really curious to hear your okay. thought on this. If you took out all the environmental stuff, all the stuff about saving the rainforest, and it wasn't about pollution, it was like some sort of magic monster that just wanted to eat these fairies and stuff like that. Everything else was the same. Would this have been a good movie? Didn't they make that? It was called Avatar. And that was not a good movie. <laughs> and that was still about saving the rainforest and white man socks and stuff like that. I mean, no, this is, it I'm was talking about, about saving Pandora from unobtainium. Yeah. Uh, that's stop it. Would it have okay. been a good movie? Uh, I, I was thinking uh, that. It would need a few major rewrites. I don't... Yeah, because the thing about this film, this is not like, especially at that time for all the rainforest stuff, this is not the worst offender. It really is not. No, but uh, there was some, I will say this, there was something about it that I felt like, everything just felt like it had just bottomed out. Like, I did, because I remember even, I would have been 13 mm. when this came out, 14? I'd probably have been like 10 or 11 something. Yeah, 13 or 14 maybe when this movie came out. I remember clearly seeing the trailers and just literally like as a cynical middle schooler or, or like a high schooler freshman or something like just literally looking at it like this is the stupidest looking that like it, it just See, and I, I feel I, like I, I feel a little bit like, inkling too like I kind of knew like what they just, were going to do. I feel like it just I just got this feeling like this had bottomed out. Like the whole environmental message thing, because yeah, Captain Plan as well. I just feel like okay, we've hit rock bottom. Mm. Like this is we have played ourselves out. And we this. really have it. We had much more. On. We had at least like three more years of this. We we did, um, but I thought I thought that was the I thought that was the bottoming out. Like I'm just like it's it's never gonna get better. It's just this is it. Like for me, I think that's, from here on I think out. then Captain Plan was when I was starting to notice it. That's so funny when you were getting tired of it. That's when I was starting to notice it. Um, and I was sort of, and even just looking at the trailers, I, I, like I said, I didn't know this kind of manipulation yet with like, you know, saving the rainforest and stuff, but I'm like, I, I feel like I know what they're doing, kind of. I just can't it's put it in words. It's propaganda. Like, yeah. that's no, the, that's the problem. Um, and it's um, hard to make, I mean, everything, okay, and propaganda, like, like be, be nice to your family. That's technically kind of propaganda, no, but okay, you can okay. work with the that. Difference... You can make it interesting and human, and this is not, no, the, the... so many of these just didn't feel human. Even if it's about saving animals, that's fine. That's still there's a very, a very human response. There's a very easy way to differentiate the two here. Fern Gully is propaganda. Miyazaki films are just good movies. That they happen to have an environmental message. Good point. Like, great. Like, I can I can sit through Nausicaa and be like, it's still a good story, it's still a good movie, and there's an environmental message, but it does... Here's the problem. This movie feels like it was made to deliver an environmental message and not tell a good story. Mm -hmm. Miyazaki films feel like they're made to tell a good story that also just happens to have an environmental message. Yeah. In. You know another great because example? Because that's his viewpoint. Another great example? It's so weird, but that Saturday morning Sonic cartoon actually had a yeah, very good that. environmental message, and it was 
not shoved yeah. in your face. It was very subtle. That was a fucking Star Wars story. Like, yeah. And then, like, we were all wrapped up into it because of that. So and it, it really wasn't until later I really started looking at this. I just kind of got the feeling. And you're right. It was focusing <laughs> on telling like a good story works. first. <laughs> it was focusing on telling a good Robotics story first. The Emperor. <laughs> and having good characters first. Even though, I mean, it's, I, I know it's yeah. a silly show and stuff. But it's like it... For a kid's show, it's still really damn good. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah, and that's I, I where Fern, that's Fern Gully just fucking fails. Like, it, it's just so obvious. Hmm. Um, it's not, I can't even say it's quite a straw man type argument, like some things, because I'm like, who's the, the sludge? <laughs> like, uh, and, yeah, and, the and Avatar, Grace Avatar man. is a, a worse, or a... Yeah, Avatar is a worse straw man because they have actual human characters that are like, mm. but but in this one it's just, like, I'm the sludge. I just what? I, I I I love Tim Curry. Like he's the best thing in the movie. But I'm just like, what? Whose idea was it? Just like it's some sludge villain? I did. You know, with that said, because uh, I'm thinking about what I remember of that sludge villain. Yeah, I remember Tim Curry. Obviously, I remember the animation on him being gorgeous. And then it always makes me think the animation in this movie. Is really beautiful. It is good, good animation, but it just good goes character designs. Uh, and yeah, and then I'm thinking about the story, and I'm thinking like, well, is it like okay, the bat raps are really bad, uh, uh. but I'm thinking of everything else. And I'm like, okay, it's shoving the message in his face, but it's like for a kids film, this is fine enough. You know, it's one of those things where it's like it looks nice enough. It's creative. You know, it has nice backgrounds and and uh, nice character designs. And, you know, the characters aren't the worst, you know, like I said, except for the bat rap. Uh, so I was wondering if, like, did the environmental side, if you took that out, would it be good? And it's like, no. I'm, I'm kind There's of no I don't, story. No, no, no. I don't think it'd be, like, quote unquote, good, but I don't think it would be as bad. I think you would admire the good stuff in it more if that distracting message wasn't in there. Even though I know that's why the movie was made, but it, it really is too distracting. You're focusing more on that than the characters, which is what they want, but that's not what an audience member wants. You know, I think that, like you said, with Miyazaki yeah, and that Sonic I, cartoon, it kind of does it subtly, so it's almost tricking you, but it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, which is telling a good story with good characters. I wouldn't even say it's tricking you, it's just... Well, in the case of Miyazaki, at least, that it's just informed by his viewpoint. Well, I mean, just that's, feels very natural. Yeah, that's his, yeah, he's naturally, like, he's a cranky, older Japanese male who really appreciates the environment and greenery and, like, it, it just, it informs everything he does. And he thinks there's, you know, like, the kids have lost something to a certain degree that everything's so modern and like really like watch him and like the behind the scenes stuff on any of the uh, Ghibli stuff. Mm. Like, you can just tell he's like that kind of grandfather. He's like, yeah, kids nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we grew up, we played outside. Well, and, like, well, just, just came that. from him watching like his grandkid or something like Who that. Who keeps referring to as a lazy bum. Yeah, she's, it just says, you she's know, a she, lazy she's a, bum. <laughs> she's a lazy bum. She needs a job. And that's where Spirited Away, like one of the yeah, best anime so films ever came from. It just comes naturally from that. I don't see Miyazaki going like, you know, I'm going to convert the world to my viewpoint. It's just, he naturally just, that's who he is. And yeah. whereas this this one just felt like it was put together by some sort of like environmental committee. Like, how do we sell people on this idea? And this is one of the first. And you don't need to because it's really pretty simple. We live on this planet. You really shouldn't shit on it too much. It's not a hard idea to sell. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what you know. If I'm, you need to sell it, I think you're actually doing something wrong. Well, you know, and here's something that clearly it had um it had a message and it's shoved in your face. But I thought it was so much more effective, and that's the the Lorax, the book, not the shitty movie. Uh, the oh, book and, and even too. the even the cartoon special. Uh, I thought, man, did that. That stuck with me so much more. When I heard that story, I really didn't know. I thought trees were just wood with leaves, on, and that's it. You know, I didn't know they had a purpose. I didn't know that they actually did much more than I was aware of. And that movie showed it to me through those visuals. Didn't you ever read The Giving Tree? Their purpose is to be hopelessly abused <laughs> until there's nothing left but a stump, and then you sit on its face. I feel like a lot of my childhood <laughs> literature is just looking at stumps. <laughs> <laughs> and crying. <laughs> but that is very true. That is so much more effective, and it shows not only 
Uh, the downside of all of this being gone, because these environmental uh, movies and stuff, it's like they'll show a few trees being gone or something like that, but they don't want to go too far. They don't want to scare you too much. And it's like, no, go far. We, we think in extremes, and but not. So not only do we have these visuals of just, uh, you know, this whole place destroyed of trees, all these animals walking away, and, you know, these gray skies and everything, but it also had a solution of, you know, him giving the seed, and just that one word, unless, how friggin' powerful is that? You know, and so few words and such simple drawings, and he just got the core of what's gonna stick, much more than something like Ferngully is going to. Yeah, um, you fucking hippie. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I do find it hilarious, because I'm sure we're gonna get all these rants from, like, people that are just like, Are they buying to this SJW shit? <laughs> and, like, when, when this review came out in the Lorax, we got so many leftists, like, pissed off. It's like, I don't get it. <laughs> Why do you hate the environment? What? They just want to teach us to love the environment and hug a tree. You monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I love pissing off both sides. I really do. Um, I, I just, I don't like to belong to either side. I think it's I just, just, I just call it like I see it. I don't like to be freaking manipulated. So. Yeah. And <laughs> what a shock, no matter what side you choose, if you choose a side, there's going to be a lot of manipulation, a lot of lying, uh, you know, and, and a lot of propaganda. And yeah, that's just how it's going to go. And I, I don't like, but no, side. Doug, I like being in the middle. Their saying, hey, side just, is right. Yeah. Whoever side, side it is, as long as we're right and they're wrong, you know, it, it's okay. Well, but this person's a psychotic maniac running it's our side. So it's all gangs. That's always what I say. It is pure gang mentality. You know, nerd gangs. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm not talking about nerd gang. No, I'm just. But but yeah. It, honestly, I mean, with nerd gangs and stuff like that, and like politic gangs, it really is such a gang mentality. And yet we're fighting so strong to be away from that. But the only way to fight that man, that gang mentality, is to join our side. Hello. So <laughs> that you know what we're you're all right, and to figure out who's right, y'all have to fight. <laughs> dance puppets, dance! dance! Not for all of you. Beat it. Okay. Uh, what a weird place for me to go for that. Go to a Michael Jackson. Yeah, party. that's <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what we should do. We should just always tell them that I, I should just answer in the affirmative. To, I mean, you're an SJW talk. You know what? You're right. Like, you're some fucking Fox News watching capitalism. You're Do you right. You know what? You're right. And then just watch them fight over that. Yeah. No, see that you're really missing the entertainment. <laughs> the one you just don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. uh, there, I think there is mm -hmm. so much more fun when you don't pick a side and you just watch the ones who are so on their side just... Um, I don't know, you just sit back in your chair and just be like, you know, because it's free. <laughs> like, it's free entertainment. And, and that's the thing, I think if I was like a super left liberal or something like that, you know, i have tried to be defending for Goli. Why has the rain forced it? Why aren't we talking about it more? This had a good message. I would totally not see the fact that this I is would, not a good story. I this would, is so manipulative. I would kill myself first <laughs> before I sit there and say, you know what, we should defend for Goli. No! <laughs> no! Piece of shit, man. <laughs> No, I, no, I, uh, I, I actually do uh, feel no. I do feel a little bad because I feel like, th like I said, I don't this movie, make no, a no, good no. movie. No, no, no. This movie did have some good stuff in it. It in had terms good of, animation. It had yes. good animation. The voice, the voice so, acting's fine. I, so, who doesn't some love of the Tim characters, Curry. you know, the humans and the fairy is trying to. Figure, even though we've seen that stuff to death, it's cute. Uh, mm. The the actual the shots of the environment, and everything are very pretty. I still don't know what that blue hand thing that they do is. Um, I'll just, but, I'll throw on a Miyazaki film any day. Yes. Like, I, um, I don't bother. I, with. If you're wondering, like, well, what's, what's your answer to that? You know, to something like Ferengali, if you said Miyazaki, even that freaking Sonic cartoon. Yeah, I feel like there's so many better things out there that can be done that families can watch and they can enjoy it and they're smart and they're clever and they're entertaining. Never make it look like you're selling something. Yeah. And that's the problem. That, that's my problem with most of the internet. Whenever somebody comes, I'm offended because, insert right argument or left argument here. It's like, like, you've immediately, it sounds as like, soon as yeah. you put offended, it's like, I, you lost me. I, it's just like it's like <laughs> even you're if you're right, well, even it's if like this you're for something that's something. really awful, it's like yeah, that's true. Whenever you it's say always, I'm offended, yeah. you're saying this is what I'm selling. You immediately feel like this person is going to try to manipulate it's you. The same thing, even with, though they could be very it's the honest. The same thing with religion. I love religions that don't bother trying to sell themselves. Too. It's like you know what? We'll sit here. We'll do what we want. You, you want to come? 
Whatever. We're good. Uh, more than Mary, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, but you're always uh, welcome. You know, the um, ones that like, you know, how dare you not like the passion of the Christ? If you would only believe in Jesus, I'm like, you know, go sell that somewhere else. Yeah. I, I don't, <laughs> you know, go door to door somewhere else. Uh, but yeah, so now that we pretty much offended everybody that lives, yes! um, I love how Fern Gully brought that out. This is why it's not a good movie, because this is what it does. It does the opposite of what it's supposed to be. It doing. angers the blood. Actually, uh, again, maybe you would know more about this. Is is there still problems with the rainforest? Is that because we never hear about it anymore? I think we played it so much that now it's like a cliche. Well, you there's know, truth to that. Uh, it got know. so overplayed that people got sick of it. Well, yeah, so the, now it's like you bring the, it up, people just go, oh, that's but now the it's problem like, with causes. Is, no, I was going to say, is it like a legit problem anymore? <laughs> like, I don't I, know. It yes. sounds so weird, but actually now I'm kind of looking back like, actually, now that it's that stuff is quiet down. It's again, kind of like the religion thing you're saying. Yeah, now I kind of want to go back. It's, it's like, it's, is it okay? It's or is still it a some... problem, which is one of the reasons why I hate like fads like this. Cause they come and they go and then people forget. And it's like, Oh, well I guess that resolved itself. No, no, it didn't. <laughs> yeah. It's, but it, it's hard. Cause when something catches fire, pun intended, uh, you really don't want it to go so far that it will alienate people either right away or later or down the line. Uh, you know, especially if it's something that has a good cause. I mean, rainforest, that is a good cause, but it was pushed so much and so poorly that I think suddenly... But on the bright side, we still have the Rainforest Cafe, it would feel like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God knows how many trees mm. died to bring us that. <laughs> Sweet. $30 for crab cakes, and I help save the rainforest. <laughs> God, Jesus. Do they do anything like that? Do they donate anything? Or? Yeah, it's on the menu. It's on the menu or something, but I'd, I'd have to look it up. The last time I went there was 20 years ago because the food was terrible. Yeah. It's, no, it's a tourist trap. Like, and yeah. we make it rain. And it's like, great, you turn a sprinkler system on. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. Sure, the chef loves and a, that. And a little, and a little stereo goes... <laughs> That's it's yeah. basically all they did is the same thing they do at our jewel osco grocery store yeah. <laughs> when they have to water the fresh water there's some announcers like fresh water misting is coming on and it does this like little like thunder and lightning sound but your like, head under there is the rainforest cafe if you eat some of the food <laughs> it'll then, be more healthy and then, it, than and the then they miss cafe. the fruit that that is the rainforest cafe only with you know some animatronic toucan sam you know and some trees. It's 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 like the it's like a lame ass version of the tiki room at Disneyland. <laughs> that rains on you. <laughs> I've been to Disneyland recently. The tiki room is pretty lame. Yes. <laughs> so that's gotta be really lame. Um but No, there are worse things. You could be stuck in the Hall of Presidents, which you only go see when it's literally raining outside. You're like, <laughs> I need to get out of here. <laughs> Um, so... Now watch, I'm gonna have historians, I'm offended that you would make fun of our founding fathers! <laughs> uh, gotta be a name for, like, just... A, we should a, just make a list of people we can offend. Yeah. And just well, I, I think through. that's all we do. We never talk about the movie. We just talk about people no. we want to offend. <laughs> um, no, we talk plenty the about internet, the And it's so easy! We talk plenty about the movie. Uh, was this, okay, was this... <laughs> Pre-Aladdin or post-Aladdin? It, it was pre-Aladdin. So, okay, so, so th th this is when they didn't know how to use the Robin Williams yet. Yeah. They didn't know. I feel like if it were know. after Aladdin, they would have had that bat character and been like, "Oh, if we knew!" <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! Because <laughs> yeah, I, I remember watching it. I'm just like, really, I, I, I love Robin Williams, and and like I thought this would be tailor made for him, but I'm like, I feel like he's actually not used well enough. They have him rap. Robin Williams was a very talented man. He was not a rapper. No. And, uh, yeah, that's what you did. And, yeah, I'm kind of with you when Aladdin fine, came out. You, can you make know him... they just saw this movie and everybody that worked on Fergley just went, Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Wait! Shit! Wait! <laughs> he can be funny? Shit! <laughs> I, I get the feeling that's what, like, everyone at Batman vs. Superman were doing when they saw Captain America Civil War. They're like, Oh! <laughs> like, damn it! That's what we should have been doing! <laughs> take a shot for the drinking game. So somebody, I, I read a comment, somebody was, somebody was like, take a shot every time they say Batman vs. Superman sucks. <laughs> take a shot every time somebody says they're offended. Actually, if I say it sucks 16 times in a row, do you think I can give people alcohol poisoning? <laughs> Go for it. It sucks, 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 it sucks. That's gotta be three quarters of a bottle of vodka. <laughs> uh, so... Anywho, um, 
I don't like the movie. I don't think it's the worst, but like I said, I do think the animation is beautiful. Voice acting is fine. Some of the characters are okay. You know, the, the, the fairy's okay. The main fairy and some of the side characters. Um, I, just hearing Tim Curry do that sludge is great. Um, I guess my problem is this. To me, there is nothing more laughable, like hilarious, than right-wing propaganda. There is nothing more insufferable to me than left-wing propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not saying very right, well put. I'm not saying right-wing propaganda is, like, great. I'm saying it's like, you just look at it and you're like, okay, like, this, it's, it's, what the fuck? Like, ha ha. When yeah. you know left-wing stuff's coming, but it's like, oh, Left-wing stuff, up. it's like, listen, it's like yeah, listening to the most that? boring shit on NPI. You're just like, oh, shut up! Yeah, it's like the right-wing stuff, the extreme stuff is pretty funny. The left-wing stuff, like, it's so I, bad, you know, because it's I, so batshit crazy. Yeah, like, no, it's, it's like... Like, whenever Bill Maher or Michael Moore comes on, it's like, I can't yeah. laugh. I can't be like, tee hee, whatever. I'm like, oh, shut up! It's, it's the same reason, like, I can't stand listening to Al Gore give a speech. But when <laughs> yeah. Donald Trump opens his mouth, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> so, again, I think we've just alienated every person. Uh, Job well done. <laughs> I, I feel like we've done well. Um, but... Yeah, so there it is. I I, I don't hate Fern Gully, but I, I'm kind of with you. I hate it. I um, I the, did the, not like watching that movie. Um, I, I like the no regrets. Enough. No regrets. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go. If um, you haven't tried <laughs> getting in a flame war down below, you will. You will. But do not use those flames to set the rainforest on fire. That's what matters. We have added nothing to life. Uh, you want to go, like, kill a baby seal? Got one in the kitchen. Been holding out on me. Yeah. Man, I guess well, let's kill it. <laughs>